Hey everyone, um, aka friends, family, followers, and subscribers. Um, I'm sorry I look like I just got back from a workout. For some reason, it seems like it's a common trend whenever I'm recording these videos, but I'm here to bring you another book review. So, this is Morningstar, which is book three in the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown. It's the third of a trilogy that starts with Red Rising, and it's kind of the conclusion of one complete story arc. And all I gotta say about this book is, it's a whirlwind. You don't stop from start to finish, and some of your, um, I'm trying not to go into spoilers here, but some of your favorite characters um, do end up biting the dust in this book, and it it's a brutal book. It goes, it handles themes like betrayal and love and liberty and freedom, but it also subverts expectations a lot like its predecessor, um, Golden Sun, which, if you haven't read, has a wild ending. And it isn't afraid to do bold things. That's something I've really, really enjoyed about Brown's writing style. I will say, one of my biggest complaints about his writing style, and I understand this is, especially when it comes to science fiction and when it comes to outer space literature, my biggest complaint is that oftentimes there's not a ton of depth. This is just my own personal opinion. However, I do think series like Red Rising, Dune, Out of the Silent Planet, when it comes to world building, they struggle a little bit. And that's what I'm wrestling with in Morningstar and in the Red Rising series. There are maps, there are lists of people that are important that you wanna look out for. The political system and... So some of those political systems I was mentioning were um, how the golds operate in their tiered class. They have families rallying around each other. To my understanding, whoever has the most support of the noble houses in the society based on each planet gains control of that planet. They also get, they also go through this, the Institute on each planet, whichever of the golds, the younger golds wins and they win by being able to rally enough troops to their respective house that they're assigned while also dominating every other house. So while the Hunger Games is, it goes on until there is no one left standing, the Institute carries on until one house is left standing. People don't necessarily die. They, sometimes they do. Uh, sometimes you see like brutal, brutal murders happening um, while people are in the Institute, but the biggest thing is whichever house comes out on top is the house that gets the highest opportunities inside the gold society. Some of these characters who Darrow was in the Institute with really, um, they start really having their character developments come to a head. And that's what makes this book so compelling is some of these characters that you thought would have just like clashing interactions with each other are actually, they actually just are being themselves and they come to, they come to an understanding with each other. I'm trying not to get into spoilers here, but some of those characters meet their match and it's really cool to see. They go into some of the levels of the, like the casts, if you want to call them, of the society is literally called the society. And one of those levels that they explore is the obsidian level. And that was really interesting because it adds a whole new depth of nuance and complexity to these already growing and already maturing characters. I know I just complained that this series doesn't have a ton of depth. I just did that, I know that. But there has been some in Morningstar and so that has been one of my biggest drawbacks of this series 
Not to mention, it moves so quickly. You don't, ha you barely have time to process whenever an important character dies or whenever there's a bit of betrayal or some sort of political maneuver that you don't guess is happening. But it's a strength and a weakness. However, it can be kind of jarring because one moment Darrow and his friends are orbiting around Mars and Phobos, the moon, one of the moons of Mars. And then the next minute they're orbiting around one of the moons of Jupiter. And that's, there's a huge distance between the two. Additionally, the book definitely sets up future installments, which is really interesting. And from the looks of it, those future installments, such as Iron, Gold, and Dark Age, which are books four and five respectively, give the story a little bit more breathing room in terms of having perspectives inside of other characters' heads, which is a big thing for me because it adds, again, more depth, more layers, more nuance to the world building, to the characters, so that you don't just have, you're not just narrowed down to one person's mindset, but you have multiple perspectives that reinforce your core themes, reinforce your core ideas of the story. And I'm excited to see where Brown takes the story. I know he's not totally finished with writing it yet, but I think Morningstar is a great addition to the series so far. I will give it, with the drawbacks, I will give it a firm seven and a half out of 10, but pretty good, highly recommend it. Can't wait for you guys to read it. So like, subscribe, yeah. And hope finds you and yours on a very, very happy pre-Christmas holiday. Thanks so much. Peace.